So when it comes to films with large cult followings, I'd say Fight Club is pretty high on that list. The movie, released back in 1999, grossed over $100 million and has since gained enormous popularity, with some even putting it among the greatest films ever made. And of course, when you have something this beloved, it normally means one thing. A completely unnecessary licensed video game nobody asked for that came out nearly a decade after the film, and thus I introduce to you Fight Club The Game released in 2007. Now this comes courtesy of Genuine Games, the company who made 50 Cent Bulletproof, and this. Yeah, they only made two. Although in this case, that doesn't mean unsuccessful, since despite mixed reviews, Bulletproof sold 2 million copies and has since become something of a cult classic. This, on the other hand, yeah, this didn't fare quite as well. Because unlike the movie, Fight Club the Game did not become a cult classic, nor did it garner much praise, or make much money, or do anything except fail in pretty much every regard. And today, I'm going to find out how bad this game really is. Now, surprisingly enough, this game's story actually tries to follow the plot of the film, and if you think that's a horrible idea, that's because it was, and it's pretty much the prime example of what not to do when turning a film plot into a video game. Firstly, the cutscenes in this game cannot be called cutscenes, unless of course you count voice acted PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> you are for the moment i'm the guy who runs this club i was sent to clean up this mess fuck that i'm in charge here boy not anymore dickhead they're actually so bad you'd think it was lagging but no they're just part of the game i should add the only ones not like this is the one at the start and the one at the end which are actually surprisingly well done the rest on the other hand well the rest are this don't you go telling. Don't you say it. I'll tell anyone I goddamn want to. He doesn't know. <laughs> he has no idea. Which, for obvious reasons, doesn't help the story it's trying to tell. Then again, even if they were fully animated, I'm not convinced it would make that much difference. Since what they've done is essentially just take the movie's plot, then bastardise it to the point where it feels like a nonsensical fan fiction that destroys absolutely everything the movie was trying to say. For example, the story follows your player named character, who after a failed suicide attempt, is told he'll have a reason to live if he finds Tyler Durden. Go to Lou's bar on Saturday night. Ask for Tyler Durden. So you literally just rock up to Tyler's house, say oi oi is Tyler Durden in, then become his right hand man within the space of a few days. I'm not joking by the way, the whole story is literally him showing up in random places with no explanation as to how he got there, saying hi is Tyler Durden here, fighting someone, then moving on to another place with again, no explanation as to how he got there. I mean take this cutscene for example, which is the very first time you go to Tyler's house. Tyler, I want to meet you when he gets back from Seattle with the shipment. Seattle? Thanks. Oops. You aren't supposed to know that. I don't know you. What are you doing here? Right, yeah, because after directions like that, how could you not find the exact place you need to be? Seriously, how the fuck did he get there? Did he just walk around and ask 700,000 people if they'd seen Tyler Durden? I should also add, this isn't just some random fight club in Seattle. No, it's a key part of Project Mayhem. And if you recall, to even be part of Project Mayhem, you have to stand outside for three days without food or shelter, which this guy hasn't done since he rocked up once and fucked off after five minutes, which makes the fact he found this even more ridiculous. Now, I understand it's unreasonable to expect the same level of quality as the movie, especially since the story can be beaten in under 20 minutes, but they've done such a piss poor job of adapting it that I genuinely wondered why they even bothered. I mean, take the film's twist for example. When it's revealed that Edward Norton and Tyler Durden are the same person, it has impact. The game, on the other hand, has this. Whew. Hold on, wait. 
You are jeopardizing the mission. I have to get to the... God damn it, he's completely nuts! Tyler, shut the fuck up. You're insane. I will stop you. No, I will stop you. <laughs> you think you can stop me? Come on, go ahead. I think you're completely out of your fucking tree. Stay back! Stay back! Take the gun from him. Go on, take it! I'll do it! I will do it! He's too chicken shit. Come on, get him! <laughs> hey, man. Tyler Durden. What was that? Seriously, what was it? I don't know which character is which, which voice is coming from who, or what the fuck is going on. I mean, yeah, it won't be a twist the second time around, but at least have it make sense. It's also worth mentioning that the story isn't the only thing that's been affected by the uh, creative liberties. For example, remember Lou and Raymond, those very minor characters with incredibly small roles in the film? Yeah, well here, not only are they part of Fight Club and Project Mayhem, Welcome to Project Mayhem. But they're also professional fighters. In fact, everyone in this game is a professional fighter. And yes, I understand it's a fighting game, so having people who couldn't fight would be a terrible creative decision, but at the same time, it makes literally no sense. The film made it very clear that all the members of Fight Club were just regular, everyday people with no fighting ability. So even though this change is expected, it's still very jarring to see Lou, the random bar owner who actively tried to stop Fight Club, not only heavily involved, but pulling off shit like this. Honestly, at this point you can't even call this Fight Club, because it's more like a horrible self-insert fanfiction based on Fight Club, from someone who was desperate to be part of the film but couldn't give a fuck about the story. So normally I'd start this section with something like, just like the story, the gameplay is horrible. However here, that's really not the case. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's nothing groundbreaking, but compared to some of the other games I've played, it's really not that bad. It's essentially just what you'd expect from a fighting game, and to be honest, the amount of content actually surprised me. I went into this expecting the Phoenix game's absolute bare minimum approach, although it does seem like they've made some actual effort. Now if that effort boiled down to stealing from more established fighting games, I'm not sure. I mean, I imagine it did since it seems like a watered down version of Tekken, but nevertheless the controls are decent, I didn't run into any glitches and it functions fine. In addition to this, I expected the enemies to be horrendously programmed, but frequently found myself getting my my ass handed to me by the shockingly competent AI. At one point I honestly thought I was going to have to spend quite a lot of time learning the moves to beat the story mode. Thought of course being the operative word. Because as it turns out I'd massively overthought it, quickly learned that the classic 1-2 combo will effortlessly overwhelm pretty much everybody and make the game completely devoid of challenge. Yeah, if you can't tell, this is where it starts to go downhill. See, while I can't find much fault with the actual mechanics of this game, it does suffer from one huge issue, and that, that is a severe lack of variety. The game only consists of three combat styles. Three, martial arts, grappler, and brawler, which they've randomly assigned to the various characters. Granted, you get to choose which one to use, but that still doesn't change the fact there's still only three. And the thing is, good fighting games make their fighters feel unique, which is why people latch onto certain characters to begin with. But here, what the fuck are you supposed to do? This isn't Scorpion or Sub-Zero, it's Bob with the exact same combat style as three other characters. I should also add, this is a direct result of trying to turn Fight Club into a fucking video game, and it was never going to work. Because as I've explained, none of the characters in the film were very special, nor could they fight very well. So it really was a losing battle. 
Anyway, in terms of other content, you have Arcade Ladder Mode, Versus Mode, Survival Mode, where you see how long you can survive on a single health bar, Training Mode, which is, well, Training, and Network, the game's online mode. Which, as you can probably guess, doesn't have a particularly active player base, if it ever did. Seriously, I'd love to know what this game's peak player base was. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't play all these modes, but of the ones I could, they don't really add much at all. Training is just that, training, and survival is just arcade mode, with the only difference being your health bar doesn't reset in between fights. It's worth mentioning that playing them will give you access to various unlockables. For example, Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit. But there really isn't an incentive to unlock any of them. I mean, yeah, I could play arcade mode with every character and unlock Abraham Lincoln. Or I could just not do that and find a better fighting game, which quite frankly is a much more appealing option. So that was Fight Club the game, and honestly, it's a bit of a weird one. I mean, on one hand, it's shockingly playable, something that is sadly lacking in a lot of the other games I've played. However, on the other hand, it does kind of remind me of Little Britain, in that it's a game that was literally made for no one, because if you bought this to see the story of Fight Club in video game form, then you wouldn't get it, because it shits on absolutely everything the movie stood for. And if you bought it because it's a fighting game, why? I mean, don't get me wrong, you could easily spend your time learning the moves, but why choose something so painfully mediocre when you have games like Tekken, Mortal Kombat, and countless other vastly superior games to choose from? Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.